What's up, peeps? It's a Monday. I just got my dog to bark. Awesome. It is a rainy Monday here. I have had a cold for like a week, so I still don't sound like myself. But I'm feeling better enough that I really want to get a pour in. And with Valentine's Day around the corner, I wanted to do um, like Valentine's colors. So let's get you down. Sorry, I have two lab puppies and they bark all the time. So let me get you down and we'll get pouring. All right, can you see? Yeah, okay. So I have a 14 by 18 canvas. Um, and this is one of the ones that's one and a half inches deep. It's a little bit deeper. So I will go over my colors and everything while I'm getting these put into cups. So I'm starting with gold and I'm trying the, um, the Blick Studio acrylics. So this is my gold for today. Sorry about my dogs. Um, and then just regular white. I went with Artist Loft white. I like the one in this container a little better. Um, I have less splitting with it than I do with the like big containers that you've seen everyone use, like the Artist Loft Flow Acrylics. I don't know, I've been having splitting with this lately. So I'm just giving the other white a try. And then this is my Raw Umber um, Liquitex Basics. So kind of like a roses and chocolate theme for Valentine's Day. Thought that might be fun. And I wanted to sandwich my brown in between my whites so that it doesn't kind of take over and become super dark or super brown. I really wanted the pink. So this one is Liquitex Basics Rose Gold Pink. And I didn't have quite enough so that it was a little bit of the light magenta. So that's why it's a tinge darker than just the rose pink by itself. And my pouring medium today is seven ounces of Elmer's Glue All, two ounces of the Global Pouring Medium, Global Pouring Medium Gloss, this guy, and then, and then three ounces of water. And I mixed that equal parts one-to-one -one ratio with my paints. And for this size canvas, I had six cups. So I did two ounces of the pouring medium and two ounces of paint in each one. I wanna get this pop of brown against the red. So I'm gonna go out of order here for a second. Amazon delivery, I think, is why the dogs are going crazy. And then in each one of my paints, um, the colored ones, not the white paints, I did three ounce or three drops of the silicone oil, my spot on silicone oil treadmill lubricant. All right, let's see what colors do I want next. Go pink. I'm just trying to keep my red and my white apart. I do. I already have pink, so I don't necessarily want like all pink. So let me know in the comments. You know, everyone has their own opinion. Do you like? super stir your silicone into your paints? Do you not stir it very much? How do you feel about that? I give a pretty good stir. I'm a believer that I think that it needs to be stirred in more. Um, otherwise it helps lead to caterpillars. I personally think that paint density has the biggest effect on caterpillars. Um, I tend to see caterpillars where you see your lines in your paint and the silicone just follows that. So that's where I'm at with it, but 
Let me know what you think. I've been known to be wrong on occasion. All right. Go red over top. So roughly I learned from Julie Cutts, who's amazing. She is an Australian painter. Follow her. She's just a really, really good overall human. Um, but she came up with, and yes, I am on the top pouring my white over my red, but I think it'll be okay. Um, she came up with like a general guideline for how much paint you need for the size canvas that you have. So if you multiply your length and width and multiply it by point, anywhere from 0.08 to 0.13, you'll get how much you need. And it just kind of varies based on how big your canvas is going. I'm trying to that shadow a little bit. I'm sorry guys, like I said, it is kind of a cloudy rainy day here. And so. Um, let's see, that's probably about as good as it's gonna get, unfortunately. My canvas won't sit on my little guy. There we go. All right, here we go. Um. I'm just gonna do a traditional. Look at that, do you see? It's a sign, can you see that little heart? Look at the heart in my cup. That is too stinking cute. All right, hopefully that means this is gonna turn out nice. All right, this thing is not working. I started using these. There we go. Oh, the dogs today. They usually, of course, right? They never bark. Um, they really don't bark very often. Apparently, unless I'm filming. All right, we're gonna give these guys a second to do their marinating, and then we get you one of these lovely kitchen torches. This is what will bring up cells um, when it reacts with the silicone in the paint. And a little spatula for my corners or anything else we need. And I always have, oh my gosh. I don't know what the dogs are freaking out about. There must be somebody working outside. Um, and a skewer to pop any bubbles, get anything out of your paint that you have in there. Sometimes the hair will fall in or just like a little clump and that's always helpful. All right, let's see how this one goes. One, two, three. All right. Oh, that's a pink. Right in my red. Well, that's better. This one. So this paint I'm putting on the corners is gonna get um, tilted off anyway, so I don't mind that it's muddy or that it's tilted, I mean, um, striped. So it's just to kind of help the weight of the paint will pull the other paint off and over. I don't want to lose any more of my red since this is super pink. So I'm going to move back and forth and come down toward me. is moving a little bit slow. So I think it is just a scotch thick. A 
Well, I have the weight of the paint down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and go over this other corner. And bring it back up. Move the weight of the paint back toward the middle. And then I'm going to torch. Okay. So up high, moving around, what you're doing is warming up that silicone and that causes it to come up through the different layers of paint and that is what gives you your cells. The heat will also pop some of the bubbles that are in the paint, the air bubbles. gloves off I'm dripping paint um my paint was just a touch too thick because as you can see some of these the cells are gonna hold their shape but they're a little bit smaller just because they um have more resistance they can't grow as big if your paint is a little bit on the thicker side just fine we're gonna move them back and forth anyway and get them to stretch out I get a few more. I do like a lot of background. All right. So we're just going to. Thing. Sorry about my voice. Just gonna walk back and forth. Get this paint going. And so this stretching and back and forth movement is what gets your cells to grow. It stretches them out. Everybody always wants to know how do I get big cells? You have to move your paint. So I'm gonna go down to this corner. Go all the way off. Keep some of those guys because I do like that little cluster. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this corner. Right. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the weight back. Now is when you're kind of fine tuning, seeing what you like, what you don't like. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I don't want to muddy anything up anymore by continuing to move my paint around. Kind of have this corner with a little bit of a swirl, this corner with a little bit of a swirl. They kind of match. I like that. So I'll let that be. And it becomes, you know, how picky do you get? I don't like this little blob guy. I'm gonna see if I can get it off without overstretching everything. If not, it will stay. But we're just gonna try. Oh, that's about it. I'm starting to lose some of the shapes of some of my cells. I'm going to bring it back. And that is how that is going to be. See? Oh, I will bring you guys down. Get a closer look. Make sure 
my canvas is flat, I'm just going to touch up some of the corners. Am I doing fun stuff for Valentine's Day? We are going, um, there's a local radio station. My husband and I have listened to the morning show for 10 years. They've been on for 10 years now. And they're having a 10 year anniversary show um, on Saturday. So that's gonna be our little celebration. The kids go to grandma and grandpa's and we we'll get to go celebrate with our local DJs. It'll be fun. We don't usually go out and celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, our wedding anniversary is right, it's on the 4th of February. So my husband likes to try to sneak them in together, <laughs> which is fine. Um, you know, once you have kids and stuff, it, kind of tends to be more about the kiddos when it comes to the holidays and stuff. So I'll make the kids some heart-shaped pizzas. If you have an Aldi by you, Aldi has heart-shaped pizzas, take and bakes that you can do. Super fun. Make the corners look, guys. Let's see. Oh, don't put your shirt in the paint. All right. Kind of match up a little bit some of the corners. Try to find colors that are similar when touching up corners. Don't look super out of place. Sorry for my head. Okay. All right. Well, I will bring you guys down a close up and then get this guy on my drawing board. I'm going to flip you guys over. Let's see how to do that. Oh, I don't know. Sorry. All right. Here we go. Oh, I love this color palette. I think is really, really fun for Valentine's Day. You know what you think? Um, it is pretty pink. Also, be really cute for like a baby girl nursery. So that's it, guys. Sorry, my camera work is a little shoddy, but um, I hope you all have a wonderful week, a wonderful Valentine's Day, send lots of love to your families, and I will see you next time on Flippin' Art Studio. Thanks!